In this session, I'd like to look at combining the three modes we've learnt about so far and get you applying your knowledge of modes and their chords to better understand a common chord sequence in all styles of music, something musicians call a 2-5-1. So, it's on with the theory hats for this one, but stick with it as I guarantee you'll come out the other side having learnt a lot of new terminology and how different types of chord and scales work together. To date, you hopefully have a good understanding of the modes of Ionian, which remember is just another name for the major scale, Dorian, and more recently the Mixolydian mode. Staying within the key of C major and looking at the modes of the C major scale, the sound and character of each of these three modes can of course be represented by a chord. C Ionian, or the C major scale, can be represented by using a C major seventh chord. D Dorian can be represented using a D minor 7th chord, and G Mixolydian can be represented using the chord of G7. OK, these three different chord types are, in essence, the building blocks of creating a 2-5-1 chord sequence. And if you understand each chord type and the modes associated with them, then I guarantee that navigating and making use of a 2-5-1 chord sequence in music will be an absolute breeze. But before we continue any further, I'd just like to look more closely at the construction of our G7 chord and how it actually functions in music. I like to think of these dominant 7th chords as sounding a little unstable, Unlike the defined and stable sounds of our major and minor chords that we've encountered so far, a dominant 7th chord, in this case G7, sounds as if it always wants to go somewhere. Just have a listen to this chord played on the piano, and hopefully you may be able to hear where it wants to move. The reason for this instability or need for harmonic progression is due to an interval contained within every dominant 7th chord out there. It's the interval between the major 3rd, in this case the note of B, and the flattened 7th, which is an F. This interval in music is what's called a tritone, named simply because the physical space between the two notes is the distance of three whole tones. One, two, and three. Hence the term tri tone. If we look at the relationship between the B and the F on the fingerboard like this, and using terms that we're more familiar with, hopefully you can see that they create the interval of a flattened fifth. See, a perfect fifth up from the B is found like this, and flattening the fifth, or moving the note down by a fret, gives us the note of F, or a flattened fifth. In music history, this interval of a flattened fifth, or tritone, was frowned upon by the people of the church, and during the 18th century was referred to as something called Diabolus in Musica, or the Devil in Music. Now, thankfully these far-fetched beliefs are firmly in the past, although even today this interval still continues to suggest a scary or evil sound. And I personally absolutely love the character and mood it possesses, and make use of it in the music I write. So going back to the G7 chord played on the piano, hopefully you can hear it wanting to move here, which is the chord of C major. Now. In music, we use the term resolve or resolution to describe this harmonic movement between chords. So we can now say that the chord of G7 wants to resolve to a C major chord. Now, the reason behind this is that the tritone contained in our G7 chord, the notes of B and F, resolve outwards. The B wanting to resolve up to a C and the F wanting to resolve down to an E. Watch again and notice this resolution of the tritone as I go from a G7 chord to a C major chord. 
Of course, I could extend our C major chord to a C major 7th chord, but importantly our G7 chord would still function in exactly the same way, always wanting to gravitate towards a major chord. Okay, I can already hear you saying, so where does this 2-5-1 sequence get its name? Well, let's start referring to these chords as numbers, and I'm sure you'll begin to see where all this is going. You've already seen how important it's been to understand a scale both as notes and as numbers, and the same is true about chords and chord sequences too. Now, Numbering chords is, as you'll be pleased to hear, very easy to do, and the system musicians use is directly related to the scales and modes you've already been numbering and using in your studies so far. If we take our G7 first, this chord, if you remember, was created using the chord tones from G Mixolydian. Now, here's the important bit. We also learnt that G Mixolydian was the fifth mode of the C major scale. So if we were to number this chord, we'd quite simply refer to it as a five chord. So, the fifth mode, the five chord. Okay, so far so good. Now, in music theory, we don't actually use numbers. Instead, we use Roman numerals. So writing it down, our G7 chord is now referred to as a 5 chord. Taking this one step further again, we can now add on to our Roman numeral the type of chord we're dealing with here. So putting this all together, we end up with a 5-7 chord. As we learnt earlier, this G7 or 5-7 chord is unstable and wants to move on and resolve to a C major or, if we were to extend it, a C major 7th chord. And using our chord numbering system and, of course, Roman numerals, we'd quite simply refer to this as our 1 chord. Hopefully you can see why it's called the 1 chord and not any other number, as C major, remember, was our first scale, or key, that we've been so far constructing the other modes from. So, Using our C major 7th chord and pasting the chord type onto the end, we can now refer to this as a 1 major 7th. Remember, again, all we've done is put the chord type after the number. OK, so there's the 5, 1 part of the sequence, so let's now take a look at the 2. And if you haven't already guessed it, the 2 refers to our D minor 7th chord. Now, we number this in the same way, using Roman numerals and putting the chord type on the end, we now have a 2 minor 7th. Now, the reason why I've used lowercase Roman numerals is because this time the chord is minor and not major. In this key, the D minor 7th is called the 2 chord because quite simply we constructed it from the Dorian mode, which happens to be the second mode of the C major scale. Second mode, two chord. So putting these chords together in order, our two five one will look and sound like this. D minor seventh, G seven, and C major seventh. Now, personally, I find the sound of this chord sequence really satisfying, as each chord resolves to the next in a very pleasing and melodic way. And believe me, I'm not the only one to enjoy the sound of a 2-5-1, as this sequence crops up in literally thousands of songs across all styles of music. OK. Firstly, thanks for sticking with me through that one, as I can appreciate how daunting all this new information can seem at first. But I feel that as a bass player, understanding how different types of chord function in music is a great skill to have, and is another element to creating strong bass lines and melodic ideas. One great advantage about numbering any chord sequence, just like the one we've done with our 251, is that we can easily change key without too much panic. But I'll explain more about that in our next session. 
For now though, what I'd like you to do is just have a go at building your own bass lines and melodic ideas to accompany our 2-5-1 chord sequence in the key of C major. Again, use what you've been taught so far in how to handle each of these different chords and see what works with the backing track at the end of this session. If you play something you like the sound of, then well done, as you've single-handedly created something that you can use every time you encounter a 2-5-1 in the future. Good luck and I'll see you soon.